All right, all right, all right. Hey, traders. Hey, traders. Hey, traders. Big guys are doing well. This is John Howell here coming to you with another another awesome little uh, update or not another awesome little training that I have for you. And I'm going to share this with you. Let me just make sure that I have everything on set and everything going well here. All right. So in today's session, what I want to cover, let me just make sure I'm all here. In today's session, what I want to cover is I want to cover, you know, how to actually take the confusion out of the market, how to take the confusion out of the charts that you're seeing right now and how to actually, yeah, how to actually take the confusion out and how to actually read the chart, what the chart's telling you. So therefore you can make much more better informed decisions based on, you know, based on what you're seeing in the markets and so on and so forth. So let me just bring this, um, just making sure that I have this here, just making sure you guys are logging in okay. And then I'm going to, once again, I'm going to start to, um, I'm going to start to, uh, to, to get going with this session here. Once again, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to take the confusion out of the markets as we, there we go. Hey everyone. Hope everyone, hope everyone was a good weekend. Hey Anthony, hope you're doing well, my man. Trading was phenomenal this week, my man. Trading is phenomenal. Lots of volatility, lots of big movement. Oh, phenomenal, phenomenal week. Really, really happy. Really, really happy. Mm. Lots and lots of volatility. It's good to see the volatility back in the market. All righty, guys. All righty. So we'll just give it a few more minutes and then we're going to let people log in. But before I do start, guys, uh, once again, um, glad to hear. Fantastic. Hope you had a good, hope you had a good week uh, too, Anthony, uh, with your trading, my man. And as always... With all your losses, my friend, make sure you go back over them and say, okay, what could I have done better? Even with your profits, what could I have done better? There's something I missed. What were the pros? What were the cons? And that's you just continue to learn and continue to learn from there. So let me, all right, fantastic. You know what, guys? Let me just get straight into it right now. How long have we been going for? Almost four, almost three minutes. All right, guys, let me, let me get started. I'm going to get started straight into this session right now. Um, all right, guys. So. Uh, in this session, guys, I'm going to talk to you about how to take the confusion out of the charts, how to actually look at the charts when you're trading, how to trade the charts when you're trading, and uh, you know how to look at the market where you would take the confusion out of the markets because this is the most highest probability thing you can do when trying to trade the markets. Okay, so this is obviously there is obviously risk in the markets. Do not be placing a trade based on what you see in this session. This is not financial advice. This is just to me to educate you to help you become a much better trader because I don't know your personal situations. And obviously, no, past performance doesn't equal future performance in the markets. So with that being said, let me get started now into, let me delete that. Let's get started now into the markets about how to take the confusion out of the charts. Now, this is something, there's so many things that's involved with the charts. There's so many things that involve with the actual market itself. There's indicators. Uh, there's obviously moving averages, there's volume, and you can use all these other indicators as well too, such as stochastics and MACDs and RSIs and all that down home country goodness in the markets. Now, here is the thing. When we're trying to read the charts, right? Remember, the most important thing is the most important thing is what is happening right now in the markets. It's not what's happened yesterday. It's not what we think or may hope for what's going to happen in the future. The only thing we can do is to respond to what is actually happening in the markets right now and and what what and and what's going on right now. And so the best thing to do when we're looking at the markets and remember because that's all we have. We are, we trade what we see, not what we think, hope or fear in the markets. Only trade what you see, not what you um not what you think, hope or fear. Now when I say that, I when I say trade what you see, a lot of people say, "Well, I see this thing rallying up." <laughs> When I say trade what you see, I mean look at the charts, trade the charts, and 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 see what the market is actually telling you. Now, we all know the most highest probability trades are with the underlying direction of the trend. We all know that. The most highest probability trades are with the underlying direction of the trend. We want to make sure that we are trading with the overall market. Remember, we don't move the market. We just want to figure out what are the big guys doing right now. And we want to jump on their we want to jump on their coattails. So the most important thing to do when looking at the charts 
And the most important thing to do when, when trying to when trying to trade the charts is by looking at and by trading and by looking at uh just a simple is that working still? Here it is. There we go. All right, cool. All right, yep, there we go. All right, so the, one of the best things that we can do in the markets is what, what I, I believe is bring back a chart. And what you want to do is you want to bring up a chart that is just simply blank, all right? So I'm going to bring up a chart right now. This is the, obviously the options I'm looking at. And I'm going to bring up chart now. I'm going to bring up a chart and I'm going to remove this here, remove the moving average, and I'm going to remove everything off the screen. And what I'm going to do here, and what I'm going to do when, when looking at the markets is I'm just going to analyze what the actual chart is telling me. I'm going to say, okay, what is this chart telling me right now? And what is going on? So there's a few things here we can look at. The very first thing we can look at here is what is the daily chart telling us? If we trade in the daily chart, always want to say, okay, what's the daily chart telling us? Now, the best thing that I like to do is I like to squeeze my chart up as much as possible. And I just like to bring up a blank chart. Now, this blank chart is obviously the key to what is really going on right now. And now the most important thing to us as a trader is to identify what is going on right now and to trade with that. So how do we do that? We do that in a way where we where we where we where the market where we can see the highs and lows in the markets. So and remember, we need to follow along with what the markets are telling us. So if we have we have a low through here. We have, you know, I'm just gonna uh, uh, let me actually. I'll use it. I'll use a different stock here for for this here. Let me actually bring up. Let me bring up Goldman Sachs. All right, so I'll bring up Goldman Sachs here for a minute because I think this is going to use a much, much, much better example of how this works in the markets and how we can start to identify this happening in the markets. All right, so now we're looking at Goldman Sachs, and you can apply this to any market out there. All right, so remember, we need to continue to mold and bend with what the market is telling us. So if I bring up my charts right now, okay, so I'm going to bring up my charts. And let's just actually go through this one by one by one. So what do we have up here? We have a we have a low, okay? We come down, we have a high. We have a low. We come down, we have a lower high. We come down here, we have an equal low. We come down here, we have another lower high. And now we come down here and we have a lower low. So right now, as we speak at this particular time in the markets, uh, in this particular time in the markets, let me actually let me actually delete everything off the screen here. So this particular time in the markets, low, lower high, lower high, low, low, and a slight lower low. So right now, right now as we speak in this particular moment here, we were see we were seeing that the sellers were knocking this price down. All right, so the market was making lower lows and lower highs. Now the most important thing to do is that as long as the as long as the sellers keep lowering their prices, i.e., we keep making lower highs and lower highs, then the sellers are still in control. So right now, if you're looking at silver and gold right now, even though we may be maybe getting a bit of a relief rally, we still see those lower highs, lower highs in the market. All right. Now this is looking at the daily charts. If you really want to ramp this up, use the exact same analysis, but use the exact same analysis, but use it on the daily charts. So Let's go, let's continue on here. So what we're looking at here right now is we're looking at the markets. It's like, okay, here we have a high and here we have a higher high. So we have a higher high. So who's in control? Buyers. We have a high. Now we have a higher high. Who's in control? Buyers. We have a high and then we have a lower low. So who's in control here right now? No one, right? If you're looking at this September last year, who's in control? No one, right? Because there's making it's making a high, high and lower low. It's gone to the confusion again. Then suddenly it runs up, runs up, it comes up and makes a high. Then it comes down and then it makes a higher low. So who's in control? Buyers. So as soon as you're seeing this market run up, make a higher high, you're saying, okay, this could be now making a higher low. So you want to be watching that and you want to be looking at that. It's like, hey, is this making a higher low right now? And as the market picks up, it's like, oh, look, the buyers are in control. The most highest probability trade is when someone's clearly in control. The most highest probability trade that you are going to do when trying to trade the markets is when someone is clearly in control. The worst thing you can do is try to get into the markets when there's no one in control. 
And when you when you get this uh, sideways movement, you want to stay away from it. And then when someone's clearly in control, I, I higher high and higher low in the markets. That's when you want to see. Then a market market runs up, makes a high. Then it makes a high low. Who's in control? Buyers. Then it comes up and makes a high. And then it comes down and makes a what? This is a lower high, a lower low. So who's in control right now as of this circle here? This latest circle here in February this year? No one, right? Then it comes up and makes a double top. And then it comes up and makes a higher low. And then it comes up and makes a slight higher high or an equal high. So who's in control through here at this particular time in February? No one, right? Because there's no clear direction. Then it comes down and makes a lower low. Oh, okay, hang on a minute, now lower low. Then it comes down and makes a lower high. So as this was making a lower high, who's in control of this stock? The sellers. So that's the most important thing to do is when you're looking at the charts and when you're looking at the markets, so okay, that's sellers in control. Okay, cool. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and lower low. But look what's happened right now. We have come up and we made a slight higher high, and now it looks like we're trying to form some sort of higher low through here. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, well, the, well, the sellers are definitely not lowering their prices. So there's, so there's, if what we want to see is whether the buyers continue to break up and continue to break up break above previous highs. If the buyers do do that, then it's probably going to continue rallying back up. And this is now, this is another higher low through here. But you can see right now in Goldman Sachs, as we're looking at Goldman Sachs and as we're trying to trying to look at Goldman Sachs, you can see that as we're identifying these highs and lows in the markets, we can see that the mark that the charts are telling us right now, okay, we made a higher high. Now this could be potentially higher low. So if you're looking at any type of setup, you probably want to be looking more bearish setup than a bullish setup if you're looking at say Goldman Sachs. Now, again, you must have your you must have your 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 you know your setup in place. Mm. But that's what you want to look at. Okay. You want to be able to say, okay, here's the higher high, here's the higher low. Now, once again, if we break out, if we break back above 24, then now that's a confirmed, this is a confirmed higher low. And now the market can run. Now the market's likely to continue up. We don't know what's going to happen right now, so we need to watch it. So the question is, do we actually start to get this sort of action on the charts? And if we do get some sort of action like this on the charts, this is now, as you can see, this higher high was the warning bell that this trend is now likely to change. Then we start to get a bit of a higher high through here, saying, okay, now we're potentially going to change this. All we need now is a confirmation to break past previous highs. To then probably likely to continue or start a new upward trend. So no matter what charts you're looking at, no matter how you're looking at the markets, you just look at the charts. And when you've got to ask yourself, are sellers in control? Are buyers in control? Or is no one in control? Are sellers in control? Are buyers in control? Or is no one in control? Because the way that you look at these markets, the way you look at the charts, you always want to say, okay, who's in control right now? And because the, the fact of the matter is, is that when there's no one in control, that could be very volatile, very unpredictable, and, and you're probably going to get whipped around. But when there's someone clearly in control, when you're starting to get a lower low or lower high, or a higher high and a higher low in the markets, this is when you can start to see, this is when you can start to see the, the whole chart starting to turn around and starting to work in your favor when, when that happens. And this is, it just comes down to simp as something as simple as this. Now, a lot of people are trading silver and gold right now. So if I go and have a look at the actual gold price, let's go have a look at gold right now. Okay. And we, and we look at, and we look at this on, on gold chart, we can actually see that this is now making higher lows, higher lows. In fact, that's probably not even a higher low, a lower high, should I say. It's making lower highs, lower highs. You can see here that this this ran this ran down this here was a lower low. This here was a lower high. Then it came down, made another lower low, and then as this bar came down through here, right through here, this was saying, okay, now we've confirmed another lower high. Now, now who's in control? Sellers, and then the market continued down, and then we continue continue down to make another lower high through here. And there really hasn't been another lower high ever since, ever since this market came down through here. 
All right, so let me just let me delete this off the screen and let me delete this off the screen. So now you can actually see what's going on here. So this is the short term, okay? This is whatever chart you're looking at, just ask yourself who's in control. And if you're getting if you if you if you're getting a clear buyers in control or sellers in control, then you you remember the the most important thing when you're trying to trade the market is the one thing that I've learned is that or only trade the market when then so, when someone's clearly in control because when someone's clearly in control you have a high probability of that now continuing the worst thing you can do is get into the market when then there's lower lows lower highs high lows low. it's like there's really no trend at all it's just sideways movement as we saw through gold back through probably the first half of this year and as you can see right trying to trade gold when i was going sideways was very low probability. But when it started to break out, started creating lower lows, lower highs and breaking down, that's when the time, that's when the charts are saying, hey, we're now getting ready for a drop down and the market came down from there. So right now, as we speak, we can actually see that on the daily charts, gold is very, very, very severely on the downside. And you don't wanna be trying to buy gold right now because you're trying to capture a bottom. This may be a bottom or we may be getting ready for more downside. Now. What I do, what what I do say is, when you're looking at these charts and when you're trying to analyze these charts, always go back to the higher time frame to see what the higher time frame trend is. And you always want to make sure that when you're trading, you're trading with that higher time frame trend. So if I'm looking at if I'm looking at gold here right now, all right, let me let me let me erase everything off the screen here for a minute, and I'm looking at gold here. Let me let, let's look at gold for or, you know for uh, as an example for for the last say two years. And if you're looking at gold as an example, the last two years, you can see we have a low, then it runs up and it comes up and makes a higher low, higher low, a lower high, comes up, makes a higher high, then comes down, makes a higher low, runs up, makes a, a double top or a slight higher high. And now here, we're just getting this slight higher high through here. Now you can see where we are right now. This very big, this very big down bar through here, which is which I believe is a bit of a capitulation move before we start to see a bit of relief rally. I do believe we get we, uh, I do believe that we're getting ready for a bit of a, a bit of a bear market rally now. But remember, guys, remember what I just said there is that gold, especially on this weekly chart, even on the daily charts, have made it lower lows through here. So this relief rally could just be something like this. And especially if we get this rally and we start to head back down through here and we break previous lows, we're probably going to we're, gonna, we're probably going to be doing something like this. Now I'm not saying it's going to drop down like that straight away, like you know just boom straight down. But the charts are telling us that wet, that long term weekly chart saying, "Hang on a minute, this whole trend is now changing." For the last two years, we've been creating a lot of high lows, pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. But this last drop down through here. Yes, we could be getting ready for a relief rally in, in in gold, and I believe we're actually getting ready for that. By the way, I truly believe we're getting a get it, we're getting ready for a bit of a relief rally, as in like a bear market rally, and then I believe we're likely to start heading back down through here. So, mm. so by looking at the charts and by looking at that, it's so important to say, okay, where are we at in the markets and who's in control? So trying to buy silver and gold right now would be a very low probability thing to do because you're trading against the market you don't ever want to fight the market respect the market trade with the market and only look for setups your setup whatever this setup is with that now yes you can trade against the trend and now i have one i have one very 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 high probability pattern that is against the trend trade but it comes up very very rarely and i need i need certain things to happen on that now majority of my trading i'd have to say 90 percent of my trading is trading with the trend you always want to trade with that that's the most highest probability trades that you can look out there for now if you're looking at if you, that's that's gold there but if you're looking at say silver for for, for a minute here you actually can see on silver that let me just delete everything up the screen here what's happened with silver right now so you can see that the thing with silver, you can see the silver has silver's only just started dropping down right now. And we've only just started breaking out of silver right now. So I believe silver has a lot more downside to come because we spent so long, because we've spent so long in this sideways range through here. 
like pro possibly or possibly all through there. We spent so long on through there that this dropout through here, I believe there's a lot more downside to come because it hasn't even dropped nowhere near as much as gold has been dropping. So now so I believe silver is getting ready to drop down through here. But once again, when you're looking at when you're looking at gold or when you're looking at silver, you can see here, right? If I squeeze my chart up here and, and by looking at this, if you look at the market here, okay, it made a low, then it made some sort of a some sort of a high and then some sort of a high low and then it broke up and then that that, that was a false breakout and then it broke back down to make a low and then a lower high and then a, a an equal low and another lower high and an equal low and another lower high and an equal low so it actually wasn't breaking down then we come up made a higher high then we made a lower low then we made a lower high So you can actually see, right, that there's actually, there's nothing going on here, right? There is no one clearly in control of silver. Then it made a higher high, and then it made a lower high, and then it ran up and made, made, a, made a higher low through here, so nothing going on. Then it ran up and made a higher high, and then it ran down to make this lower low, and then we made this lower high, and that's when we started to, oh, lower low, lower high, and that's when we started the trend. So as you can see, where my box is, basically from here to here, no one was in control. So trying to trade the silver market at that time would have been very, very, very low probability because there was no one clearly in control. The most, one of the best things that my millionaire mentor, a private millionaire mentor, one of the best things he said to me is only trade when someone's clearly in control of that market. Whenever you, if, if there's no one in control, it's very high volatile and it's very risky and it's very unpredictable, right? Because you don't know when there's no one in control, you could have a big up bar, you could have a big down bar. Remember, trading is all about probability. We always want to have the probability, right? Because we all know there's a win loss ratio in every single system. So to increase that probability, when the market's telling us that no one is in, no one's in control right now then you want to stay away from that and wait for the market to break out and someone's clearly in control and then start to jump on some things, start to look to get into the market and so on and so forth. That has increased my success rate and my win rate tenfold just by waiting for, just by jumping into things, getting into things like I did with silver. That's one of the reasons why I got into silver, all right? I never got into silver all through here because what happened was now I was looking for a trade but what was happening is that when silver started the breakout and started the stair step down, that was my signal. That was my signal to say, you know what? Now I can start to look for a short setup. Now I obviously have my setup that I look for in the markets, but now I can look for my setup because now we're actually someone's clearly in control. Remember, I don't, I don't make the market. I just read the charts for what it's telling me right now. And the most important thing is what's happening right now. And right now what's happening, this has now created just what? Another lower low. So if you're trying to buy the market right now, trying to buy silver right now, it is very, 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 very risky. Yes, we could get a bit of a relief rally, a little bit of rally through here. But how long is that going to be? Is it going to be one day? Is it going to be no days? Is it going to be two days? Is it going to be just another, is, is this just going to go sideways and then maybe head back down again? So trying to trade against this thing, and that's where like a lot of people in the crypto market right now are continue to get hurt is because they're just not following along with simple analysis that's like, okay. And, and, and remember guys, it's all about probability, right? Because it's not about getting on one big thing and, and becoming a millionaire on one thing. That never happens. And when you think it's going to happen, it's always like a total opposite. So do the opposite. <laughs> So that's the way you want to look at the markets right now. So if you want to be looking at, if you want to be looking at, now there's, there's, there's a couple of things here, guys, okay? How the markets work and how the markets trade is um, you, want to, you only want to be looking for when someone's clearly in control, but you only want to be looking to get into the market once, once it's had a pullback or a, a, a what, I, what I call a, a price phase. See, there's two different things here. One, don't get into the market until someone's clearly in control. And then secondly, don't get in the market after it's had a big run, right? Because how the markets work is this. Firstly, if you're trying to get into the market when the market's sideways, it's very unpredictable, right? You could get an up move, you could get down move. You just don't know. There's no there's no real probability there of, of 
whatever happening. I have like, I have what I call a momentum trading system. So my momentum trading system is like, okay, then I'm waiting for momentum to start and then I'm looking to jump on that momentum. So when you trade in the markets, even if you're looking for a short on silver right now, how the markets work is this, right? They go for a run. They go for a run. So from here to here, they go for a run and then they go for a pullback and then they go for a run and then they go for some sort of pullback and then they go for a run. So as you can see, right, like firstly, as this market starts to step down, only look for short signals. But the thing is this, is that the way the markets work, as I said before, like we're getting ready probably for another bit of, bit of a run up through here. And then I believe this is going to happen. I don't know. It may not. We may get a V bottom. We may not. We, we, we'll start to see. But remember, where is the most highest probability trades when this has happened? If you look into short silver, where knowing that when the market drops down, we're likely to get a bit of run, and then we go for a run again, and then we go drop down. Where is the highest probability trades in into taking silver? Obviously, you you don't want to get you don't want to short silver when there's no one in control. But even when there's someone in control, what a lot of people do is they wait for the market to run in their direction, whether it's up or down. If the market's been stair stepping up, they get in after the market's run on. Or in this case, when I, when I, in this case right now, when silver is dropping down and we're getting these lower highs, lower lows, sowing sellers sell in control. One, a lot of people are buying it right now. Why do that? You are fighting the market. You're not respecting the market. You're going against what the market is telling you. You're not smarter than the market. I'm not smarter than the market. Now, yes, there is some sort of reversal signals that you can take. And as I said before, I do have a, a, a short-term counter trend system, but that's in and out with a few days. And I need specific things to happen on that chart. But the most highest probability trades are always trading with that trend. So people are trying to buy it right now are trying to be trying to one trying to pick a bottom in the market and secondly trying to be smarter than the market. Don't be doing that. But also people are trying to short the market. If people are trying to short the market and they know how this market works, the worst thing you can do is after the market goes for a run is try to short it down here. Because that's what a lot of people do is they wait for the market to drop down and then they go, oh, let's go short here. It's like, oh, and then the market rallies up and then they get stopped out. Right, and, and and then they get stopped out. It's like, hang on, how did I get stopped out? I went short in a bearish market. I thought John said, go and go short when the market's trending. Yes, but when the market's already had a big drop down, even through here, you don't know when that's going to end. So the most highest probability trade is wait for a pullback, some sort of pullback in the markets, and then as it starts to break, then you want to get in. So as you can see here, right, like, like pe pe people obviously wait, wait for the market to drop. And I guarantee you, people are obviously trying to go short here. And then the market goes sideways. And I guarantee, people, guarantee you, a lot of people was like, oh my goodness, I can't, I, I got it, I got short as the market goes down. And typical, the market goes sideways. It's like, no, respect the market. Respect the market. When did I get into the market? I got in here. Why did I get into there? Because that's when, after, that's when, the, that's when the highest probability trade is, right? When is the highest probability trade? The highest probability trade is when the market drops down and then we have a pullback and then we might have a drop down and then we get some sort of pullback. And then as it's breaking this low, as we're breaking this low through here, that's the highest probability we're getting into. See, if you try to, if you try to get into here, this is where, this is where it is really, really high probability chance that we're likely to continue. Why? Because we're breaking the low. But if you get in, if you get into there, if you if you try to short it there, then that's the best probability. Why? Because it hasn't had the big run yet. But if the market drops down here, like you can see as an example here, this is when I got into silver as it was after a pullback. That's the highest probability time to try to look to get into the market. It's after a pullback. Don't try don't try and get into the market right now where we are here. Why? Because one, you don't know whether this is going to have a pullback. You don't know that when I mean, you don't you don't know whether this is going to have a bit of relief rally. So you might be wrong trying to short it here. Or secondly, again, even trying to buy it here right now is low probability. Why? Because you're trying to pick a bottom. I hope you guys can see, right? There's so much more that goes into the markets. And this is where a lot of people get wrong, is they wait for like if you try, yeah, okay, John, I understand. Wait for, you know, what only trade when someone's clearly in control. All right, cool. <laughs> you know, like, 
All right, the market's making lower lows and lower highs, lower lows and lower highs. All right, the market's dropping down. All right, cool. So I only trade with someone to control. All right, okay, cool. So I'm only looking for short signals. But what the big problem with that is a lot of people wait for the market to drop down a lot and then they try to go short. That's the wrong time. As you can see here, right, my very first arrow, this, and you guys saw that with my video, I only went short on silver when it started to break out, when it had a high probability and when it started to break the lows, the previous lows. Like, okay, now we're getting ready for a potential drop down. Now, I didn't know it was going to drop down. I didn't know it was going to keep going down. Um, now, I was very fortunate that the market actually did drop down a little bit and then actually came down through here. Um, so, so the, the worst thing you can do is yes, you're looking for a short signal. You're looking for short setups. Um, oh, geez. You're looking for short setups, but you don't want to get into the market after it's had a big run because now what now, even, even in the dare bearish market, if you're trying to get into here and you're trying to get into say here and you're trying to get into here, what happens if the market goes for a big run in that direction, even if it is there stepping down and you're looking to short the market. What is, how does the market work? The market works in stair steps. So just because you go short, say down the bottom here, what are we, what are we now expecting the market to do because of how it works? Ah, oh, we're lucky to get a bit of a pullback. And then the market pulls back. So even in a downward trend, trying to go short silver right now would be a very, very low probability. And trying to buy silver right now would be even worse because you're trading against the market. And we don't know. This guy actually could hold for another day and then go for another big run to the downside. It could go for a relief rally. There's no probability in that. See, what the way that I trade is I wait for I wait for a trend to happen in place, happen in place. Then I wait for a decent sideways movement or a pullback. And then once it starts to break those lows, then I'm looking to try to get into it at that time, not after it's had a big run on. And it's so, so, so critical is that your probability in the markets. The probability in the markets comes from understanding how the markets work. A lot of people, like a lot of people got into Bitcoin, right? At 20,000. That's just nuts. Yes, the market was going up, but how the markets work are what? When the market goes up a lot, it's probably likely to pull back a lot. So people buy this market as it's going up, as it's going up, as it's going up. It's like, no, that is the worst time to get into the market. Even in a big booming market, you want some sort of a pullback, some sort of a correction. Or, you know, it's just some sort of nice pullback and then try to get in on that pullback. Because why? Once again, how do the markets work? They go for a nice run and you don't know how long that run's going to be. And then suddenly what happens? You get a pullback. So as you're buying the market as it comes up and then you get a pullback. And then it goes for another run and then you get a pullback. So the best trades, the best trades they're getting into for a probability perspective is right here. And, and then the market continues up and then right here. They're the best probability. And guess where your stop would be? Your stop would be just below the low, just below the low. And you'd, and you'd see if that trend's going to continue or not. Now, I'm not telling you that you should get into the market just based on that. You need a system, you need a setup. Um, I have, again, I have my exact rules that I'm looking for in the markets. And you guys have a fair idea what I look for. It's very, very simple analysis, a very simple system. But that's what you want to look out for. You want to make sure that you're trading with that. And so I hope you can see that that buying and selling in the markets and probability in the markets is based on you understanding how the markets work and take the confusion out of the market by one, looking at what the charts are telling you right now and only trading based on, only trading that. if there's no one in control, if there's no one clearly in control of that market or that stock that you are looking at right now, please do not touch it because it's very unpredictable, very low probability. You don't know what's gonna happen. It could go up, it could go down. There's no one in control. Only trade when there's someone clearly in control. Right? So um, so only trade when someone's clearly in control of the market. And then also when someone's even though there's even though um 
So, so even though when there's someone clearly in control of the market, you want also want to get in at the right time, not after the market's had a big run. And this is where a lot of people are not understanding how the markets work. It doesn't matter what chart you're looking at. This is what the markets do. Now, sometimes the runs are the, you know, the, the, the run up or the run down is a lot higher and a lot lower. You've got, you got, you got different time frames, right? You've got, you got, you got different, different price phases and different time phases, meaning you've got different lengths in how, how high the market runs up and then you've got different times of how, 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 much, the, how, the, how much the market goes sideways. But I did this session, guys, because I really wanted to really bring home people who are trying to trade these markets in any market out there when, when, higher, when higher probability... Um, when, when there's high probability uh, in, in the markets and when there's high probability, um, you know, to, uh, to, to, to trade the markets. And as I said before, you always want to, um, you always, you always want to, tr you always want to trade when someone's clearly in control. And when so, and if there's, if the market's just going sideways and it's creating these higher highs, lower lows sort of thing, then there's no one clearly in control. But once like silver, once markets, once silver started to break lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, someone was clearly in control. That's when I looked at, that's when I was happy to start to short it because there was no one in control for pretty much, pretty much majority of this year. Actually, for a long time, there hasn't been no one in control. But as soon as, right, um, um, as, as, as soon as, as soon as the market starts to give you a good, a, a, a clear indication that now we're breaking out, now we're starting momentum, that's when you want to start to look for for setups in the markets. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, guys, uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll quickly answer them and then I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish up here. Um, respect Wall Street. Oh. <laughs> we'll respect the charts. Who, who, whoever is pushing, whoever or what bank or whatever is happening in that market, you want to push that around. Uh, look at copper. Uh, I will soon. Hey, John Shack here. Uh, I have watching your videos for a while. I need to be your student. Uh, well, we, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube as well too. Plus, you can get the free trading course as well too. Shurek, a Shack. Um, so you can actually get a lot of free education through there as well too. Um, Um, hey, I love Elon Musk. Hey, he's back. Okay, okay. High probability trade. Bing, bing, bong, bong. <laughs> bing, bing, bong, bong. Yep. <laughs> hey, hey, Robert. How you doing, my man? Uh, three to seven periods is one direction before pullbacks. Usually, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's a lot longer. Sometimes it's a lot shorter. You just got to you know gauge it with the market there. Ah, uh, clown, clown with Twitter account. You're a schmuck too, you know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I ate you for breakfast this morning. You know that <laughs> John, uh, when can I buy S I L J? Uh, whenever your system says so 99 silver, you know that, uh, S I L J. Let's have a look at this one here. <laughs> Definitely not now. <laughs> wait, wait, exactly what I've said in this session. Wait for the market to turn around and at least your system there. Um, so what you're saying is is don't try and pick the bottom. Um, you definitely you definitely don't you definitely don't want to try to pick the bottom. You want to wait wait for the market to turn around and then get onto that. Because more times than not, it's not going to be a bottom. Nine times out of ten, this market's going to continue in that direction. The trend is your friend, and if the market is clearly stair stepping down, don't try and fight it. Again, go back to a Bitcoin weekly chart and tell me what that's been doing. Lower highs, lower highs, and people trying to buy that thing for the last twelve months, and it just keeps going down. Um, clown with Twitter account. You're my bitch. You know that. <laughs> um, okay. So nine out of nine out of nine out of 10 don't make it exactly right. Exactly right. Trading is a hard thing, right? And I'm just trying to give you guys some guidance of some extra things to look out for when, <laughs> when, when trying to do that. Um, now the more you trade per day, the fact is the more you're dipping into the sharks, not necessarily, not necessarily. You just gotta, you just gotta know when to trade. And if you don't have any clear pattern or any clear setup or any clear system that you're consistently trading time and time again, then you're just gambling. And yes, you're in the sharks water. That's why you got to respect the market. 
Simple lesson for Eve. Yes, that's right. Simple lesson, but the most powerful lesson. I guarantee you that the best thing you can do is do exactly what I'm sharing with you right now. Do not trade the market when there's no one clearly in control. I only trade the market when someone's clearly in control. But if, even if even if the sellers are in control, it doesn't mean you start shorting it whenever you like it. You need to get in at the right time because understand how the markets work. It goes for run, then goes for pullbacks. It goes for run, goes for pullbacks. And that's how the markets work. And knowing that, you want to uh, you want to just put put the uh, put put the odds on your side there. So, um, can you say the candlestick chart joke once again? Oh, <laughs> mod the candlestick, the candlestick chart. Oh, John, John, you put the candlestick chart on once again. Where's the black bars? Show me. Oh no, John, you've got the black bars on the candlestick chart. Oh no, you got black bars on the on the chart. Show me the candlestick chart now, John. Please show me the candlestick chart now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, show me the candlestick chart now. Um, John, what you mean by system? A set of rules? Exactly right, Shaq. Yes, a set of rules. What, uh, meaning like what chart setup you're looking for on the market? You don't just get in the market because you think it's a good idea? Again, that's how uh, un unprofessional traders trade the market that way. They get in the market because they think it's a good idea. You got to have some sort of technical rules. And, uh, and again, go back and look at my other other videos. You'll be able to start to see what I mean by having a plan. Simply means a pattern on the chart, a setup on the chart that you see, and you trade that one setup again and again and again. Go back over time, prove it to yourself, and so on and so forth. Please give me your technical analysis on. Baba and Facebook, sure. So let's go be a Baba, Alibaba. So what's happening with Alibaba right now? So let's have a look here. So on the short term on Alibaba, what's going on here? Actually, you know what? Let me, I'll bring out the candlestick chart for you guys. <laughs> so we can see, so you guys can see this a bit, bit, a bit better. So what's happened with Alibaba here? We can see that we have, we see we had this uh, low through here. We had a lower high. We had a higher low, came up, made a higher high, made a higher low, then came down, made a lower high, and now it's possibly going to make a lower low. So I'm expecting some sort of relief rally out of this one here, but right now the sellers are definitely in control right now. So I wouldn't want to be trying to, sh I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be trying to short it down here or even buy it down here. Because you just it's a very low probability thing. Uh, there is a lot, a lot of support right now at that 170. And once that 170 breaks, then we're probably gonna have a pretty significant drop down, a very significant drop down. If this starts to break down, then this could a uh, barber could head up and head up head, end up heading all the way down to 120. So and plus, and plus there's a gap here right now with Barber that's probably gonna try and get filled. So this is where it's probably if it starts to break that level there, it's probably gonna try and run for that gap. Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, also Facebook, uh, I, I've actually been looking at Facebook myself, uh, FB, let's go computer FB, so Facebook. So what I see right now on Facebook is obviously a big, massive gap down. Uh, what does that weekly chart tell me? This is probably the, probably the best thing out there on the weekly chart here. The weekly chart tells me simply this is that we, we came down, we made this significant low. And then we came up and made this significant high, made this significant high low, and now we made made this higher high. So uh, based on what we're seeing on this big long term trend, I would expect some sort of high low through here somewhere, and then the market and then the market to resume its upward trend and probably going to even going to come close to come and come close to fill this gap. I doubt that this gap is going to stay open for long. Again, I'm not saying to get into now because we could possibly keep keep heading down. But that long-term weekly chart right now, which is the most important part when you're trying to look at the overall trend, is that weekly chart. So that long-term weekly chart is telling me that still the buyers are clearly in control uh, of this. So trying to fight, trying to short this market right now is very, very low probability. Um, and oh, obviously you need you need some sort of um, and buying this market right now. Obviously you don't, you don't want to just you don't want to just buy the, buy Facebook because you think it's going to go up and close that gap. You need you need your technical setup. Don't just get in the market because you think it's a good idea. Never ever ever do that. 
only get into the market once you have a technical reason to get into it. And that's that technical reason or that technical technical setup is what you've been trading for the last 20 trades or what you're going to trade for the last 20 trades. So it's so important. People just, people, that's one of the biggest things that stops people from getting the market. It's like the market burnt me. It's like, no, you just, you burnt yourself. It wasn't the market you have to worry about. It's you. So, yeah. Uh, let's go in here. Very, 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 yes. Um, schmuck, that's right. Yep. <laughs> uh, awesome, Mahad. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right, cool. Uh, let's go have a look here. So, uh, thanks. You made my day. Should it be Baba? That's right, Baba. Baba going to break its neckline soon. Maybe, maybe. You made my day. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, perfect, thanks, man. All right, fantastic. So there you go, guys. I hope you can see. Just use this analysis on the markets, right? So whenever, I, whenever I am trading the daily charts, because I'm always trading the daily charts, I'm always making sure that I'm checking that high time frame trend to make sure I'm trading with that trend. Because you you never ever even if we started getting some lower highs lower lows on that daily chart, if that weekly chart is still making those major higher highs, you definitely don't want to be fighting because that remember the, the that higher time frame or that weekly chart, that weekly chart is the big footprint of what the big buyers are telling you right now, and you only want to be trading with that higher time frame. So if you're trading an hourly chart, make look at the four hourly or the daily for the trend, and make sure you're trading with that. High probability is always a setup in the direction of the higher time frame trend. So even if we're getting lower highs and lower lows, like for example, if we go back to Goldman Sachs here for a minute, let me go back to Goldman Sachs here for a minute. Uh, yeah, so Goldman Sachs. So as you can see here, right, that Goldman Sachs right now as, let me just bring this up through here. So if you're looking at Goldman Sachs here, you can see there's making lower highs, lower lows, all that sort of stuff. But if you go to the weekly chart, what do we see here? We see what? We see a low. We see a high up here. All right, we see a higher low. And then we also see some sort of higher low through here. And then you can see that there's a lower low through here. So right now, there's no one clearly in control. Probably more buyers and sellers than, than another high, high up here. So there was no one clearly in control. So you always want to be trading with that higher time frame trend. Always, always, always trading with that. It's going to give you much more high probability. Um, do you ever trade the market if it is clearly ranging, even though it has no has control? Um, okay, so if um, so, Lee, if the market is ranging, i.e., it's going sideways, then no one's in control. Remember, trading is all about probability. And probability is all about jumping in the markets when 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 we have a probability that 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 when we're getting into it that it's going to continue in that direction, either short or down. How we can have a probability of that doing happen, uh, that happening is waiting for the market to tell us, okay, now we're looking, now we're breaking out, now we have someone clearly in control. Not because we hope it's going to happen, but we can clearly see it on the charts, and then that's going to be the best highest probability trade you can take by looking at the market like that. It's so, so, so important. Um, what's a good example here? So JP Morgan. All right, so JP Morgan's are a great example of that the market started to slowly stair step down through here recently. And, but as you can see, if I go to my weekly charts, what were my weekly charts telling me? Weekly charts, high, low, Higher low, comes back down, another another significant higher low through here. And then the market ran up. And the reason why that's important is because these pullbacks you get in, the, in obviously on the daily chart, they could be very, very short lived. And then the buyers tend, tend, up, tend to end up bringing it back up and bringing it back up and so on and so forth. So there we go. Um, all right, cool. 
All right, guys. Well, that's it for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. Oh, what happened there? All right. Cool. All right. Well, hope you guys have an amazing day today. I want to do a session for you guys. Please be well. Um, and I hope you guys uh, do enjoy your weekend off and um, have an amazing day, guys. Remember, stick with probability trades. Only trade when someone's clearly in control. And when there's no one in control, you have a very low probability chance of you actually continue. And remember, it's all about probability. Stack the odds on your side. If there's no one in control, if it's range bounding, don't get involved with that thing. When the, when the market starts to break high highs, high lows, buyers are in control. So I only look for bullish setups at that time. And if the sellers are making lower lows and lower highs, the, clear, the market's clearly telling you that we have sellers in control. And, uh, and, and so therefore, you only want to be looking for sellers short. You only want to be looking for short signals. Again, to have to increase your probability of having a profitable trading career, not every trade is going to work out for you. You know your win-loss ratio based on whatever system you're looking at. But this here was all about how to take the confusion out of the charts and also stack the odds on your side even more. All right, guys. Talk to you later.